Hello everyone and welcome to a bit of a different video than I usually do. Uh, here in this video uh, I'm going to show you 10 games uh, by Joaquino Greco and they are all, te all 10 of them are miniatures and if you guys enjoy it we can show uh, some more but for now it's uh, basically just a test if you if you guys will enjoy it because it's one thing that got me into chess and got me very interested in chess because uh, uh, even though uh, most of them are not real games, they are basically uh, him uh, analyzing the openings. It's uh, what can happen, and to to beginners, it can be uh, extremely interesting. Uh, like I said, it's what it's what got me interested, and hopefully, it can do the same for you. Uh, if you've uh, if you already introduced yourself to Greco, uh, you know, share share the uh, knowledge of Greco with with your friends and uh, family. You know, at the bar and the library. And uh, I remember, I don't know if you guys tried, there's um, this old program called Chess Master. I remember I had the Chess Master Grandmaster Edition. And aside from you being able to learn from, for example, Josh Waitzkin uh, in his uh, great academy in there, there are also a list of like 100 historical games. And the first uh, on that list is a game by Joaquino Greco, uh, which I will not cover in this video, but I will uh, link to it in the, uh, in the end of this video. So without further ado, let's check it out. I'm not going to dwell uh, on the history of Greco as a lot of it is uncertain and a lot of it is, uh, well, miswritten. Uh, but I will put some links if you are eager to check that out as well in the description below as usual. So uh, let's check it out. 10 of the games. I didn't go to, uh, through any uh, particular order. I just uh, went, you know, uh, I just chose the first 10. Like I said, there are 89 of them in, in the database. So if you guys will, will enjoy it, we're going to check some other ones. So in this one, uh, Greco has the white piece. And as usual, he will be facing none other than the hoodie guy. And uh, this just made me realize I forgot to put on my hoodie. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, so we are we are ready. This is game one, uh, Greco versus the hoodie guy, and uh, uh, he has the white pieces. So e4 by Greco. Uh, let me just uh, uh, fix that uh, uh, a little bit. Uh, we have e5 by Mr. Hoodie guy, and now f4. For the first game we're showing, we have the king's gambit. We have e captures on f4, so the gambit is accepted, and knight to f3. And here g5, just. Uh, Defending that f4 pawn as you are expecting d4 and uh, this pawn will come under attack uh, And now comes bishop to c4. We have g4 by black Attacking white's knight and here bishop captures on f7. So white is not only uh, Sacrificing a bishop, but also uh, we'll see what happens with the knight here So king captures and now knight to e5 with check and this is not all that impressive uh, for white because it, black can just go back and black will be fine here. However, if you're a beginner just trying out some openings and you want to learn more, uh, you might uh, play something like king to e6, which is what Greco's opponent did in this game, and he attacks the knight. So now he doesn't allow queen captures because white will lose the knight. But this is exactly what happened in this game. So queen captures on g4, king captures on e5, and now it's just a wonderful king hunt. Queen f5 check, king to d6, and and now even d4. Uh, we have bishop to g7, bringing a bishop into the defense, and now bishop captures on f4. Uh, we have king to e7, and now bishop back to g5 with check. So the black king is in check, bishop to f6, and now e5, threatening to win a lot of material here. So black captures, we have queen captures on g5, king to e8, and now queen to h5 with check. You can uh, either go to f8 or e7. So here e7 was played, but now castles and Greco now brings a rook into the attack as well. Uh, we have uh, queen to e8, you don't want to allow something like queen f7 or rook f7. So queen to e8 defending, but now again queen g5 check. King to e6, and now our rook hunt, <laughs> king hunt continues. Rook to f6 with check. So uh, sacrificing the rook as well. Knight captures and queen captures on f6. Pushes the king deeper uh, into the position. King d5. Now knight to c3. And now king captures on d4. Or king to c4. Uh, both are equally bad for black. Uh, we have queen to f4 with check. King to c5. And now b4 with check. Greco with the utmost precision. King to c6 and now queen to c4 with check. The pawn prevents the king from escaping here. So king b6 and now knight to a4 is checkmate. 
So this is how Greco uh, takes down his first opponent, Mr. Hoodie Guy number one, and now he will face Mr. Hoodie Guy number two in a different game. So again, uh, Greco with the white pieces, let's see what happens in this game. So like I said, uh, he was uh, mostly known for his bishop opening uh, the, the Joko Piano uh, and the King's Gambit. So. Uh, the, the, the older of opening. So here we have e4, uh, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. And I know you guys are thinking you know where this is going, but it's it's not. Bishop to c5, and no, we do not have the Evans Gambit on the board. We actually have c3, uh, the Joko Piano, as Greco uh, is pretty famous for uh, inventing his Greco attack, which uh, arrives from the uh, Joko Piano main line. So queen to e7, uh, developing the queen, and now castles by white. And here d6. Greco immediately strikes in the center with a d4. And now we have bishop back to b6. We have bishop to g5 attacking the queen. And now uh, you should block it with the knight to f6. But here we have f6 by black. And this allows Greco to go for a very interesting idea. Bishop to h4. And now g5, further attacking the bishop. But now Greco just goes for it. Knight captures on g5. Uh, we have f captures and now queen to h5 with check. So the king is in check and now you should go king to d8. This is a, a, a safer square for the king. However, in the game king to f8 was played and now there's a problem. Here bishop captures on g5 and now you cannot capture the bishop because queen to f7 is checkmate. So you have to play something else. We have queen to e8 offering a queen trade but now queen to f3 again with check. The bishop covers this square so the king has to move. King to g7 and now bishop captures on g8. And here uh, black's uh, only good move is queen to g6. However, in this game rook captures on g8 was played and now queen to f6 is a wonderful checkmate. As the king is in check and uh, something for you to remember, if these two squares are uh, taken away from the black king and the queen delivers check, uh, it will always be checkmate. So something to keep in mind. So on to game number three. This is game number three, and here we have a most interesting opening. The hoodie guy chooses the French defense. So let's see what happens. E4, E6, uh, we have D4 and D5. The French defense is on the board. We have E5 now. Greco goes for the advanced variation, and now C5. We have C3, uh, we have a capture, capture on D4, and now bishop to B4 with check. Knight to c3, Greco develops uh, while defending, we have captures, captures, and now knight to c6, uh, hoodie guy is uh, playing some, some uh, vicious chess here, uh, we have bishop to d3, Greco continues developing, and now uh, knight g to e7, as the f6 square is taken by the uh, pawn. So f4 by Greco and now knight to f5, an excellent square for the knight, so Greco continues development uh, and here we have castles by hoodie guy. Uh, and now it seems like uh, everything is perfectly fine for black, the knights are excellently placed, the king is safely castled, but here comes g4. And now you have, uh, you have some problems, what are you going to do with the knight? Here knight to h4 is played, offering a trade as the queen covers the h4 square. But now Greco just castles and all of a sudden you can see that all of Greco's pieces are uh, eyeing that king side. The knight is ready to come into the game. The queen and rook are ready. So we have knight captures on f3, queen captures and now bishop to d7. Not, uh, not a good way to develop this light square bishop as all of hoodie guys pawns are on uh, light squares. So here queen to h3. Greco now uh, threatens checkmate on h7 but now g6. Uh, and uh, it seems again like black is defending, but f5 now. And black's uh, entire position just crumbles. Here we have e captures on f5, g captures, and now g captures on f5. But now, uh, of course, this is completely winning for Greco. He just plays rook captures on f5. And now there's not much for black to do. Uh, king to h8 is a bit of a sturdier defense. But in this game, bishop captures was played. Bishop captures. And now it was in this position that Hoodie Guy resigned the game. As there is no defense against queen to h7 checkmate. You could prolong the game for a little bit. But it's, uh, it's pretty pointless. So uh, another excellent victory for Greco and now we head into one where Greco uh, has uh, not white but the black pieces. So let's just shift that a little bit. So Greco is black here and we will have another King's Gambit. So e4, uh, Greco also showing that it's possible to play in great style with black. e5, f4 and e captures on f4. Greco now gladly accepts the gambit. We have knight f3 and g5 now. So showing that this is very much playable for black. Bishop to c4. And now even g4 challenging that knight and now comes knight to e5 with a double attack here and here. 
So knight to h6, Greco defends the f7 pawn, and now knight captures on g4. We have knight captures and queen captures. And here Greco just goes d5, and this is by far the strongest idea, as it opens up an attack towards the queen while attacking the bishop. So queen captures on f4, saying, okay, you do your, your thing, I'm just going to give check and capture your rook on h8. So Greco says, no problem, uh, I'm going to capture the bishop, queen e5 check, we have bishop to e6 blocking the check, and now queen captures on h8. So it seems Mr. Hoodie guy uh, tricked Greco into losing material, but Greco says, no problem, uh, queen to h4 check, and now you have big problems. If g3 just captures here, it's not an issue, so king to f1 was played, but now queen to f4 with check, Greco wants every capture to come with a check, so king g1. Okay, now there are no more checks, but uh, first queen captures on e4. He wants to be ready uh, to deliver this bishop to c5 check, but for the moment he's threatening queen to e1 checkmate. So first you have to defend against this, h3. Now, okay, uh, the king has an escape square, but now bishop d5 threatening checkmate on g2. So white needs to defend against this. The queen now guards the g2 square, but now f5 opening up an attack against uh, uh, Mr. Hoodie guy's queen. Queen back to g3, but now f4, uh, attacking the queen even further. And now all of these squares are covered, so you don't really have a good square here. Uh, you could go queen to g5, but it doesn't really it doesn't really do all that much. F3 is coming. So instead, uh, Hoodie guy blocked the f3 square with the queen, but now, only now, queen to e1 with check. Queen to f1, and now bishop to c5 with check. It's important to cover that g1 square with the bishop. King h2, and now comes queen to g3 with checkmate as the bishop now covers the g1 square. So here, Greco shows that it is also possible to play in great style with the black pieces. So, on to our game 5. Here, uh, Greco again with the black pieces, we again will have a very nice game of none other than e4, e5, knight to f3, and now f5. Something we don't see very often, uh, the so-called Latvian gambit. Uh, offers the e5 pawn and the f5 pawn, so white needs to decide which pawn to take. So knight captures on e5 as it improves the position of the knight, and now Greco takes uh, the position of the knight to bring his uh, queen uh, into the game. So queen uh, f6 attacks the knight, and now d4. Uh, Mr. Hoodie guy defends his knight. Uh, we have uh, d6, uh, Greco pushes back the knight, and now knight to c4, and only now f captures on e4. Uh, and okay, knight to c3, continuing development, and now queen to g6, uh, not allowing the bishop to be developed because the pawn will hang. So here, Mr. Hoodie guy tries f3, tries to get the queen into the game, but knight f6, Greco just ignores him. We have f captures on e4, and now bishop to e7. Uh, development is key, as Greco shows him. We know that uh, Morphy was the absolute king of development, but uh, Greco uh knew this uh, way way before morphe even started playing chess uh so bishop to e3 and now knight captures on e4 greco grabs the pawn in the center bishop to d3 pinning the knight uh, and now queen captures on g2 and now what do you play here uh queen to h5 is best for mr hoodie guy but mr hoodie guy uh, isn't uh, the greatest of players so he decides to win material first Bishop captures on e4, but now we have a bishop to h4 check. And now there is no move for Mr. Hoodie guy. He must defend check with the bishop, and now queen captures on f2, and this is now checkmate as the king has nowhere to go. So those were the, the first five, and now on to the second five, and these are even, uh, even fiercer. So uh, as you know, Greco is famous for his use of the Greco attack, and this is one of the most beautiful... Uh, games where the uh, Greco attack was employed because here uh, Greco just plays it to such a such a level that it's uh, most impressive. So here uh, again Greco is the white. <coughs> Greco has the white pieces and we have e4. So I'll, I've already told you we're going to have the Greco attack on the board, knight c6 and bishop to c4. Bishop to c5 and again not the Evans gambit unfortunately but the Greco's attack is uh, just as beautiful. So knight to f6 and now d4 starting the, the Greco attack. Uh, we have e captures on d4, c captures on d4 and now bishop to b4 with check and now knight to c3. Uh, this is basically the, the beginning of the Greco attack, but whenever I see that uh, line, I always kind of think it will go into the Greco attack. Knight captures on e4, you sacrifice a pawn because the knight is pinned, and here Greco just castles. 
uh, with knight captures on c3, b captures and bishop captures, attacking the rook, but now uh, queen to b3. This is the Greco attack at its fullest. And now bishop captures on a1, a move that is terrible for black, but in those days pretty much everyone took the rook. Uh, so here bishop captures on f7, king f8, and then now comes bishop to g5, attacks the queen. There is no move for the uh, for the black king, uh, queen, so knight has to block, and now comes knight to e1. Uh, also rook to e1 is a very strong move, rook captures here is a very strong move, but Greco continues in great style and goes for knight to e5. Uh, we have d5 by black, and now comes queen to f3, threatening some nasty discoveries after the bishop moves. We have bishop to f5, now blocking uh, the queen's attack towards the king, and now bishop to e6 with a double attack on the knight here. And here we have g6 adding another defender, but now comes bishop to h6 check, king to e8, and now the incredible bishop to f7 checkmate. Sort of uh, reminding you of the of the uh, immortal game by Adolf Anderson, as uh, the, the, the bishops are doing a wonderful job here. These two squares are covered and the king has nowhere to go. So amazing, amazing game. So uh, on to our next game, here uh, Greco again has the white pieces, and this is a really short one, so let's just dive straight into it. Also features the king's gambit, e4, e5, and of course f4, the king's gambit, uh, e captures, and now uh, we have bishop to c4, the bishop's gambit to the king's gambit, queen to h4 with check, king to f1, of course blocking, uh, and now uh, bishop to c5, already threatening checkmate on f2, but now d4. This is a, we a very well-known line uh, for white, and the white has nothing to worry about here. Bishop back to b6, and now comes knight to f3. Now white uses the uh, awkward placement of the black king to develop pieces, and now you should go back. Queen to d8 is best, however, here uh, queen to g4 was played, and now I know you don't even uh, need to pause the video to win this game. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'm just going to show you bishop captures on f7 with check. And now black's position is already terrible, but just for the sake of this uh, game, black captured on f7 and now comes knight e5 check with a beautiful fork. And of course, after king f8, knight captures, uh, black resigned the game. So another excellent victory for, for Greco. Uh, on to game 8, uh, where Greco again has the white pieces and again a very short one, but a nice one e4, e5, knight f3, knight to c6, uh, sorry, knight to f6, here uh, Hoodie guy goes for the Petrov defense, and now knight captures on e5, so the classical variation of the Petrov, nothing spectacular, but here Hoodie guy goes for knight captures on e4, and this is something you don't play, uh, here Greco attacks the knight, and now if you just move back the knight, uh, then it's an immediate win by knight to c6 check, and you will lose the queen by either blocking with the bishop and then knight picks up the queen or you're going to block with the queen and then the knight captures the queen. So you cannot do this. So instead we have queen to e7 by black, but now just queen captures on e4. And here it's uh, very interesting. Black plays d6. Now the queen, uh, the knight cannot move because the queen hangs. So here just d4 by Greco. We have f6 by Mr. Hoodie Guy and f4 by Greco. And now knight to d7, just piling up on that knight because the knight can never move. So here knight to c3, and now finally d captures on e5, winning back that knight. We have knight to d5 by Greco. You have to be careful where you put the queen because knight c7 check will pick up material. So queen to d6, defending c7, but now d captures on e5. We have f captures and f captures on e5, attacking the queen. Uh, we have queen back to c6, and now comes a beautiful bishop to b5. And again, you cannot capture the bishop because now with the with the monster royal fork knight, a c7 would win the game. So instead, after bishop b5, we have queen to c5, but it's not much better. Bishop to e3 by Greco, and the queen is trapped. All of the squares here are covered. You cannot go to any square. Uh, so uh, you might as well grab some material. Queen captures on b5 was played. But now knight c7 check, king to d8, and now knight captures on b5, wins the game for Greco. So on to game number 9, again a very short one, here uh, Greco has the black pieces, so let's just shift them. Uh, we have e4, e5, and now bishop to c4, white goes for the bishop's opening, and now knight to f6. Greco also did some serious work on the bishop's opening. Knight to c3, and now c6, preparing to strike in the center with d5. Queen f3, and now b5 even, challenging the bishop this way, b3 and b4 now, forcing the knight to move, knight to a4, and now comes d5, so excellent development in the center by Greco, pushing that knight all the way to the uh, side of the board, 
D3 by Mr. Hoodie Guy and now H6. And here you have to be very, very careful. Uh, we have knight to E2 and now uh, white says, okay, I'm uh, doing pretty well here. I can castle, I can continue developing, but here Greco sets a trap, D4. And now white is in a terrible position unless he plays a good move here, which is usually the case in chess. White needs to go queen to g3 and he will be fine. However, white said, uh, I'm just going to go knight to g3 instead because I want to get my knight to this very nice f5 square. But now uh, white is completely lost and I'm sure you know why uh, without even pausing the video. So I'm just going to congratulate all of you for finding it. Bishop to g4 and the queen is trapped. The d4 move was simply setting up this uh, queen uh, queen trap as the, the d3 square has been taken away from the white queen. So the queen has nowhere to go. And of course, uh, it was in this position that Mr. Hoodie Guy did, uh, the <laughs> resigned the game. And for the last game, uh, and this is uh, really a beautiful one, uh, Greco again with the white pieces. So let's just give him the white pieces. Opens with e4. Uh, for some reason, e4 uh, is not uh, happening. Oh, yeah, th there it is. e4, e5, and again, f4. So uh, the king's gambit once again. We are in, in, in good luck in this video. e captures and bishop to c4 now. We have queen to h4 check. Again, Mr. Hoodie Guy tries the same idea. King f1 and bishop to c5. Now threatening checkmate on f2, but now comes d4. So let's see if Mr. Hoodie Guy uh, does better this time. Bishop to b6 and now knight to f3. Again, attacking the queen. Last time uh, we saw that queen g4 loses the bishop captures on f7. So this time Mr. Hoodie Guy learned. Queen back to e7 and now bishop captures on f4. And now you should just continue d6 or uh, de uh, developing in some way. However, Mr. Hoodie Guy again got greedy, played queen captures on e4, and this now again doesn't work. Bishop captures on f7. Mr. Hoodie Guy again falls uh, for the same trap. Well, almost, because if king captures knight g5, check wins the queen. So Mr. Hoodie Guy did not accept the bishop sacrifice. Instead, he played king to f8, but now comes bishop to g3. And it's already a very difficult position to play for black. So knight to h6, he goes after the bishop. And now knight to c3. And in between move before reacting to this as now black's queen is under attack. So black's queen needs to move. Queen back to e7 and now bishop back to b3. And now you're going to uh, make, uh, you're going to try and use the f file to go after the black king. So here c6 and now queen to d3. Preparing to bring this rook uh, into the game. Uh, we have d5 by black cutting off the light square bishop from the game. Uh, but that's only temporary. So here rook to e1 attacking the queen and queen to f6 now and bishop to h4 attacking black's queen queen to g6 and here comes bishop to e7 check so not trading queens just yet waiting for king to g8 but now now only now greco goes for queen captures on g6 and it's not very often you will see greco trading queens uh, because he usually just checkmates his opponents uh, so here he does it uh, for a very good reason because after h captures on g6 here white goes for the absolute best knight captures on d5 and here whatever you play uh, is bad uh, but for the sake of uh, argument uh, we have c captures on d5 bishop captures with check and now uh, nothing for you to play if you block with the knight which is the best uh, thing to do here white just brings another attacker into the game or knight e5 even better uh, so here king to h7 was played and now we finally reach the position from the thumbnail knight to g5 and this is now checkmate as the bishops uh, do their job covering uh, any escape squares and knight g5 uh, a beautiful smothered mate uh, so yeah, uh, this is game 10 uh, of uh, the Greco series. Uh, I don't know if you guys enjoyed it, but I remember when I was starting out, uh, Greco's games were, were one of my favorite, even though they aren't actually games. Uh, some of them are games, some of them are him just doing analysis, but uh, they were definitely uh, one of my favorites. So I do hope you guys enjoy that as well. If you want more, we can do uh, more of uh, Greco's games, uh, like in, uh, let's say, uh, 10, 10 games in, in a video or maybe five if 10 is too much for you i don't know uh, comment and you know good, good things will happen so yeah uh, those are the 10 greco games uh, i do hope you guys enjoyed it and if you would enjoy another one uh yelena made a video on on uh, one of uh, greco's greatest games uh not so long ago it was a uh, uh, april's fool's day video uh, but it's actually a very serious video so if you want to check that out as well it will be the first link in the description below uh, so yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Uh, I would like to thank uh, Sridhar Patar, Luis Medrano, Nathan Bennett, uh, George Dell, and Fresh Stolen Memes for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do, uh, do mention if you would like to see more uh, Greco's games in, in a video such as this one. See you soon.